In this short video, I want to introduce you to some ideas around critical analysis, around that skill within academic writing, which goes beyond what we call descriptive writing. Now, although it sounds difficult, the term itself is rather off-putting, I hope to demystify what critical analysis is. In fact, I'm going to claim that this is not that difficult at all. And I'm going to use an example that we do every day, and I'm going to use an example from real life to illustrate that fact. Let's imagine I want to buy a new phone. Now I've decided I'm going to buy a smartphone, as I've never had one before, but I've realised that there is such a wide variety, such a wide choice, I have to really think about which is the best one for me. So what are the issues I'm going to have to consider in order to buy a phone that's right for myself? Well, I might think about cost. Do I go pay-as-you-go or monthly? What about the network coverage? I might live in a rural area and I'm concerned about getting good coverage. Perhaps I'm interested in having a, a good quality camera as part of the phone, so I might need to think about the certain functions that different phones offer. I might decide to think about the size of screen and whether that's important for me. As I'm going to be using a smartphone for the first time, one consideration of mine might be its ease of use. I may also be influenced by the sort of phone that my friends or colleagues have and therefore have a certain amount of peer pressure to consider. I might have considerations around the internal memory that the phone has. Can I expand that memory? Now, so far, this isn't critical analysis. This is simply laying out the issues. In this case, they could have chosen others, but I've laid out the issues that I'll need to consider. Critical analysis is now how we bring together these disparate ideas, how they interact in order for me to come up with the phone that I'm going to choose to buy in my particular case. You see, while I was listing those and what I'll be doing next, is I'll be thinking about the priorities. What are my priorities around the choice of phone? I'll be thinking about the advantages and disadvantages of certain elements of that, how they play off against each other. I'll be considering consequences if I choose one type of phone over another because of certain issues like the camera. What consequence might that have with regards to cost, for example? In other words, what I'm really exploring are the reasons behind my exploration and ultimate choices for the features that I want. It is this second stage of my thinking. Once I have my list of ideas, it is what I do with that list of ideas that is the critical analysis. And as I hope you'll now agree, that is not an alien concept. It is something that we do on a daily basis. OK, but what about how critical analysis appears in writing? Let me show you some examples. I'm going to start by giving you three sentences, only one of which I think has critical analysis in. See if you agree. For the first sentence, it says, the cat sat uncomfortably on the mat in the morning. The second sentence is, the dog ate the chicken because no one was looking. And the third sentence is, the frog kissed the princess often under the oak tree. Now you might wish to pause the video here while you consider which of those three you think contains the analysis and see if you agree with me. Well, I think it's the second sentence. The dog ate the chicken because no one was looking. And the reason I'm picking this particular sentence is because it alone has embedded within it a rationale, a reason. It wasn't just simply that the dog ate the chicken, but there was a reason for the dog doing that. The analysis part was in this exploration of the reason. No one was looking in this case. Now, when thinking about critical analysis, you quickly realise there's no single definition. However, there are some overlapping ideas and themes that could all be considered to be critical analysis. And I'll share with you three of the ones that I find most useful. So, in general, critical analysis can mean the consideration of the components of a treatment or a concept 
and then the subsequent discussion about the relative merits or importance of items in of those components. Critical analysis might also be thought of as exploring the rationale, the reason behind an action or a belief. And critical analysis might also be thought of as exploring potential or actual problems or issues in a topic. Now in order to explore these a little further, in each of these three cases I'm going to give you a sentence containing critical analysis. But I want to compare and contrast that with a sentence that does not have critical analysis. In other words, a sentence that is merely descriptive. So starting with the first one, exploring components, my descriptive sentence is the components of a good bedside manner are professionalism, friendliness, frequency and timeliness. My critical analysis version of the sentence is whilst professionalism, timeliness and frequency are important, the most important component of effective bedside manner above all is friendliness. And you can see that I've just gone that little bit further in my discussion with my second example here. I've again listed the components or some of the components but I've drawn a conclusion I've thought about the relative merits of those components. Think about that second definition of critical analysis exploring the rationale the reason behind an action or belief. Again I have two sentences for you. The descriptive one is hand washing is now established trust policy. My critical analysis sentence is we wash our hands both entering and leaving a ward as per trust policy as it reduces the chance of spreading infection. And you can see here it's the second part of that sentence that is the critical analysis part. The first part of the sentence was descriptive but then I went a little deeper. I gave a reason, a rationale behind it. For the third theme, troubleshooting, I'm going to present it in two slightly different ways. First one is the one I've already outline looking for potential of actual problems but I'm going to end with an example which is where I compare and contrast I look at advantage and disadvantage and the reason for that is because I'm well aware that many students think that critical analysis is looking at pros and cons but is only that whilst it is indeed critical analysis it is by no means the only example it is by no means the only way of thinking about critical analysis so taking the looking for potential problems. My descriptive sentence is, we usually give low dosage aspirin after a suspected mini stroke. My analytical sentence is, however, if stroke symptoms are caused by bleeding inside the brain, taking an aspirin could make the situation much worse. And you can see here, I've deliberately followed on from the descriptive. I don't want you to get the impression that descriptive writing is somehow wrong and must be avoided, very often we need a descriptive part of our discussion in order to analyse the thing itself. You have to have information in order to then evaluate, in order to then critique that information. Finally, thinking about pros and cons, comparing and contrasting. My descriptive sentence might be, a dog is a faithful companion. My analytical sentence simply goes a little further. A dog may be a faithful companion, but it requires a big commitment from the owner. I'm offering a pro and a con. And this idea of having a pairing of the two ideas is pretty common in critical analysis. But as you've seen from my other examples, it isn't always possible to do that. It isn't always desirable to do that. Well, thank you for listening, and that is the end of part one. In part two, I will show you a piece of academic writing and we'll look at it in detail to see where the analysis is occurring and how these different definitions of analysis can be used within, within a single piece of writing.